we run out of time, and first thing we do is walk through the introductions. We'll talk about the first two weeks and stuff like that. That's fine. Then we'll talk about the edition. I'll talk about the progress track. We'll wrap up and any tech questions or things like that. If you're new to the program, we can cancel those. So. Where to start? Yes, no. Um, just to kind of start off with just how we got where we're at, obviously um, those of you who are 8th grade parents, you're in year 3 of Adventures, which is hard to believe. I'm sure you're as, like, wow, that was the past three years as we are. Um, and then for those of you that's your second year, obviously one of the changes is we're in new space. Um, they've kind of commandeered this pad area along with the commons and some classrooms down there. Um, and they're also moving their way up to take advantage of the choir room and band room when it's not in session. We've got some large space that allows us to use that instructional link too. So just a lot of changes going on that way. Um, but some common questions we thought we'd start off with is just um, after two years now, what are we seeing? It's still just a short time to get some really good quality data. Looking forward to um, some of the additional data we'll get from our fall map testing as well as if you're a parent of an eighth grader, your child took the explore test as a sixth grader, which is the kind of the first ACT entry point test. It's, a, it's an eighth grade test. And we gave that to those adventurous kids that you're in sixth grade. And we'll be taking that again in November of eighth grade. So that will be a really nice marker for us too to see how they're doing in college readiness as well. We're still working on a few skill sets. Um, so what we're seeing though so far, um, and given that one year growth that is really excited about those of you, the last year's seventh graders, so this year's eighth graders, their growth data exceeded our building growth data. So if we're looking at overall growth in reading, um, their growth data exceeded ours by 7.6% uh, in the building. So really it was even more than that. Um, when we look at building growth data and then we pull out adventures and look just at adventures, they were almost 8% higher than the building and their scores are figured into the building score. So it was actually even bigger than that. Yeah, we're excited about that. But not only did they grow, um, they grew by 220%. Okay, so if a child meets their growth target, that's 100% growth. Okay, the Adventures kids last year in seventh grade grew by 220%. So on average, they doubled their growth target. Okay? What was exciting for us to see that is, as you know, as sixth graders, at the end of their sixth grade year in Adventures, we had that implementation dip. Okay, they did not meet their growth target, um, growth targets at 100% that year. Okay? Now a couple things with that, that's not uncommon in our building in general and across all three middle schools. Anytime or nationally for that matter, anytime you see a, a transition, okay, you sometimes will see that when kids move from a, a building, if you will, um, to another building. So that's not completely uncommon for us. It's just that first year of adventures, it was bigger than we would want to see. Okay. Um, what this shows is not only did our kids make that up, but they made that up and then some. Okay, so we're looking for that upward trend, and that's true on math of any students. You're just every kid will take these kind of, but we're looking for an overall upward trend, which they showed us really well. Um, some things that we'll be looking at as well as we are fall map testing this year with all of our students, um, so we'll be able to see kind of where they're at right now, and then that year growth without that summer piece in there. Talked about the explore test. And then how else are we measuring kind of how we're, what else, Iowa, measuring how else um, they're growing is, you know, your input and student input. Because some of those soft skills that we think is one of the big pieces of adventures are really hard to measure. Um, they, uh, you know, how are they getting ready as far as those 21st century, their ability to collaborate, their ability to problem solve, their ability to take initiative, their ability to um, self-advocate. Those are huge. And we, the map and the explorer and all those good little dandy standardized tests really won't measure those. Um, but we'll be really anxious to follow these kids and you as parents and hear from you as they go on through high school and into college and see when they're ready. As a mom of a college freshman, your eighth graders are more ready for that than my college freshman. You know, you have to call home and say, my computer's broke. Okay, you're now an hour away. <laughs> so, um, those are good things. So we're really excited to, to see that and that growth. Some growing pains again this year, and we know that. Um, if you'll flip it a little bit for me here. Um, some changes are, you know, as we grow, and I don't even know if they're changes because we haven't done this piece before. So it's as we grow into this um, in 7th and 8th grade, why, why the same um, curriculum? 
And so if you have seventh graders, you're doing the eighth grade, what would typically be an eighth grade science in US history. And I say typically in this district, because districts do those sciences, especially in, in, in social studies, is in a different order. They're not sequential. And so it really doesn't matter what order you do that in. And part of the reason for doing that was to increase that collaboration and that flexibility of the program. Okay, there are four student or four sections of students and three classes that they're going to be taking. Um, and so mathematically, they can't all be here at the same time. So that also has raised questions, why do they move in and out? They move in and out because there's so many different offerings that these adventures kids want that we're able to offer it for four hours. So the difference this year is we have three teachers who are here the full time. Where last year the teachers spun out, so even though the students stayed for those three hours, there were only two teachers. So they couldn't have science every hour, they couldn't have social studies offered every hour, because only two teachers were there. Now what we have is we have three teachers on all four hours. <coughs> and the kids have to move in and out. Because amongst your students, we have about four or five different levels of math going on. We have two different languages at four or five different levels going on. Okay, not to mention orchestra and band and choir. Okay, all of those factor into how those kids can come in and out. How those um, learners can be getting in and out of the program. So that's um, why that is there. So by doing a common curriculum, that means all four of those hours are open to all students. And they're going to talk about the things they've put in place as that transition to I'm not always here to start the dish at the same time and what they've put into place and some really great problem solving that is also increasing those advocacy skills and those self-starting skills for students. So I think out of that adjustment is going to come some really great skills for our learners from that. Uh, for those of you who have seventh graders, will it look that way next year? I'm not sure. We add another section. And we're talking about how could we make it so that maybe we at least start that first 10 minutes together in adventures. As this program continues to grow and push us to think creatively and innovatively, and luckily those are the skills that the students are capturing as how to do it. That's my spiel. And I'll turn it over to the real experts here and let them talk about it. That's nice. Yeah. I'm going to You know, I don't right now, but that's an excellent question. And so I think, um, I, I will tell you this, we're, we're working with um, both David Brack and Tim Dorey at the two high schools to talk about what, they're very well aware of this group of learners coming over, very well aware. And what could that look like and what's that gonna be? And we, some of your children are already heading over there and already asking those questions. We have a few that travel over for ninth grade college and so forth, so. Good question. And a conversation we'll keep having through the winter and spring as you get ready to transition. All right, the experts here. We just wanted to introduce ourselves. Um, a lot of new faces to me, I know, and to you as well. But my name is Andy Lazari. That's my fifth year teaching in Eastern Carver County, my first year at Pioneer. Um, I taught elementary school before this, fourth grade at Jonathan for three years, and before that I taught at Chaska Elementary for a year. And it's interesting for me because coming in here, some of those kids who went to Chassie L, I noticed from third grade, and I don't know if they recognize me, but I recognize them a lot. <laughs> so I, I see them, and uh, I say hi, and they give me the look like, I know you. <laughs> well, you look different. <laughs> and I think it's the hair. Like, I think it was, it was shorter back then. But. So it's, it's a new experience for me and an opportunity for growth for me, and I really, really enjoy it. I find it super challenging and super interesting and I love interacting with the kids and, and getting their take on it and them helping me build kind of our curriculum around what they need and when they need it. It's, it's really different from elementary and kind of what I'm used to so it's 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 a great experience for me. Um, just a little bit about me personally. Me and my family live in a savage. My wife and I have one child, 15 months old. He's walking around, moving everywhere and I get zero time between 4 and 7 p.m. when he goes to bed. Do anything besides play with him. And uh, we're actually expecting our second child in February, so uh, we have a doctor coming today to ultrasound for the first time for that one, so excited about that. But yeah, very busy, and this, this um, adds to it, so it's really exciting for me to be here. Take turns, right? Teachers. Um, so I'm Elizabeth Brown. Uh, this is my 10th year of teaching overall. This is my third year here. Uh, my teaching experience, I do have an elementary background as well. I taught in elementary for three years. 
Uh, then I moved up to middle school and worked within special education for a couple of years. And then moved over here to Pioneer Ridge and finished off and working with mostly 8th grade and now 7th and 8th grade. Um, education was there undergrad at the University of Mankato and my graduate work was at the University of St. Mary's. Uh, family, I have two lovely babies as well. My daughter is 13. Um, so I'm getting to see her experience in the same curriculum and she's coming home and telling me she had a density experiment. They're actually getting into a pool for theirs, so that's like, well, well, we'll someday have a pool. That's pretty yeah. exciting. Yeah. Right. Right. Voter will leave. Yeah. 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 We can do science. Yay, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty fun as well. Um, and then helping her with her language arts when she'll take it. Um, you may know how that feels sometimes. And then I also have an eight-year-old son. Uh, he's in third grade, and we live in Shakopee. So they keep me pretty busy, and as you know, with this older age group, and you're getting there, you think it's busy now, and it is, but you go into sports, and all your activities, and dance, and uh, so that keeps me pretty busy as well. So um, my child is now 32 years old, <laughs> but I have been in this district for 24, she went through this district. We live in Ingrove Heights, but she would commute with me. And so she went through the school system. And I have immense respect for Cart East and Morgan County Schools because they meet the needs of their learners. And this program is one way, and it's an exciting way to do that. And this is my second year in this program. And I have seen tremendous growth in the current eighth graders. But when they were the squirrely little, like, there's anything wrong with being squirrely, squirrely little <laughs> seventh graders, because there is, there's just a, a difference. They, they learn how to navigate life a little better. And um, seventh graders, though, they were nervous about working with eighth graders. They are coming around. They're, I am really pleased with how they're not terrified of the eighth graders anymore. They work with them and talk with them. There's a lot going on here that we, you know, you can't predict. You really know that was going to happen, but there's some exciting growth of those soft skills, as Ms. Miller said. Okay. Um, I've taught for a long time, 24 years here, eight years before that in New Jersey, where I'm from, and um, I've taught seventh grade, eighth grade, high school, biology, earth science, earth and space science, for uh, unique learners on both ends of the spectrum, and um, general ed as well. So I have a lot of experience, and I like kids. Shockingly enough, after all these years, I have eight kids. <laughs> I'm not that lady that goes outside and punches a hole in their ball when it rolls in my yard. No. I'm like, Utah State University and University of St. Thomas is uh, my education experience. And it's great to team with people from elementary because I'm secondary and that you don't even know how to do bulletin boards or anything. <laughs> not that you know how to do <laughs> 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 with like all the different subject matters like twining together and collaborating that way. Yeah. So I I appreciate the routine. I like all team too. <laughs> I think my biggest aha moment coming into this program is the level of communication skills that your children have. Um, and I, I think it was truly surprising in how like Dina said they advocate for their learning, but it's it's this unbelievable respectful way of connecting and communicating, where they look you in the eye and they say, Ms. Brown, I'm really needing for my learning right now. And the way that they're telling me and talking to me about what they're needing for their learning, that in and of itself blew me away, but the way that they talk to each other and they collaborate, which is that seventh, eighth grade thing is just, it's a non-issue because they know how to talk to each other. And that's, I think, surprising for middle schoolers, actually, that they have that ability to do that so well. Um, and then with their presentation skills, and as the language arts teacher, obviously that excites me, but they have this ability to get up here, and even I, you know, am nervous, but they can do this, and they can communicate what they're trying to say, they're confident in what they have to say, so it's those 21st century skills that kind of blew me away day one, so and then I just keep getting to know them, and keep getting to see that, and that's been, that's been one of the most exciting things. 
I wish there was a test for that. <laughs> for those soft skills. Yeah. Because um, your children would score way and above yeah. um, everybody else Ooh. just because they've had to figure it out. Ooh. And they're, they're good at that. It's good. We, Sorry, I know. We're on the agenda. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, fine. These are um, our first three weeks' accomplishments. Of course, there have been many more than these. There are like every day, there's a million little accomplishments when you're coaching or interacting with someone and they get an aha or they accomplish something. There's very satisfying. We've learned the appropriate use of new spaces. And by we, I mean um, mostly the kids, but we oh. have learned to move around and navigate in our new way. Um, we got together with all three grade levels and set norms, expectations for these, and those posters are coming eventually when they'll be posted all around. They created what should be appropriate behavior, appropriate use of every space, and uh, they did an excellent job. The eighth graders kind of mentoring because they kind of know more, seventh graders know, and the sixth graders were new, and they were also uh, very much engaged in that. Um, all of that technology piece, the Google Docs, the Google Folders, the sites, all of that has been uh, created and they should have them all.